Merry Christmas, or Christmas Eve, I guess you can say right now. I do plan on making a holiday horror video, and I'm probably going to make that a little bit later on tonight. Uh, there's probably going to be nobody in this video right now, and uh, it's understandable. It is Christmas, and I hope you're all spending time with your family. But my family is not around me right now, unfortunately, but I'm lucky in the fact that I've been able to speak with my, my kids and my mom and my better half and like, Hey, Murder Sue, welcome. Uh, thanks for coming in. So I, I won't make this a long one. Uh, hey, Scalder. Um, Merry Christmas, guys. So I've got a few things to unbox. Hey, Amy. Um, and uh, and show. So the first one, hey, Sunset. Uh, mug. Merry Christmas, everybody. This came from my mom, actually, and I, uh, I unwrapped it with uh, already. And it... Uh, I'm a big softy, and it did make me, uh, it made me tear up when I, when I got it. Because you guys know I try to keep, hey, George, I am on early. I'm going to be on later tonight, but most people are going to be out with their family doing Christmas. So I wanted to do an earlier video with an, like, kind of Christmas gift unboxing. Uh, later it will be a holiday horror one. Hey, David Gallagher, have a Merry Christmas. Hey, PD. Uh, he did actually uh, open up some stuff already, uh, but, uh, which I showed in other videos, but mom sent me uh, sent me this. This is one of the things mom sent, my mom sent me right now, and I'm not sure if you can see that. So it's a it's a pocket watch, and it's a uh, engraved. It says to my son, never forget that I love you forever. I hope you believe in yourself as much as I believe in you. <sighs> Merry Christmas, Alan. And uh, that is uh, the type of family that I that I have. And uh, probably the reason for my overt positivity that you see on my channel. Uh, I was very lucky. Here it is opened up. I gotta fix the time on it. <laughs> but I was. Merry Christmas, Sinister. But it means it means the world to me. I love pocket watches, and uh, I will use this. Actually, I will use this a lot. Now I have some media stuff to show you guys. I'm going to leave this one here to last. Uh, this one and one that I got for my dad. Now, I want to see a couple smaller ones. Actually, I'll show you first. Uh, <laughs> these were got for me by my better half to watch when my kids are around. And I'll explain in a minute, actually. So the first one was this one here. Power Rangers, Megaforce, Robo Knight Christmas. Robo Knight Before Christmas. So if you know me, you know I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. So is my oldest. She's uh, she watches Power Rangers. It came in Rider. So this was like when we finally get to spend some Christmas time. Uh, it is uh, together. Uh, it's just kind of cheesy fun Power Rangers Christmas video we can watch together. And both of my kids, but especially my youngest kid now, actually watches uh, watches a bit of of the wrestling every once in a while. My favorite Power Rangers series is probably RPM. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, well, love the original, but RPM is probably the one that I think kind of did it sort of best. But it's been a while since I've seen the Disney era. That is the Disney, Disney era. No, no, this is like, uh, most Power Rangers stuff isn't CGI, I mean, except for like the newer movie. Um, most of it is like practical stuff. It's done because, you know, it's, it's Sentai. Or like that really old movie, that really bad CGI. But no, that's a TV series. <laughs> I'm the lucky one. And this one here is Ring in the Holidays. So this is a WWE uh, wrestling video. And uh, it has holiday theme wrestling. I'm, I'm not joking. It's, it's a thing. Uh, <laughs> things like a boiler room brawl between mankind and Santa Claus. Santa Claus with an X. He's the evil Santa Claus. Fighting Scott Taylor. Santa's Little Helper 6 Diva Tag Match. Tajiri Claus versus Bubba Claus, and Bobby Heenan ruins Christmas. So, very intrigued on that. I'm going to save that for when my kids are around or when I go to see them, and we can watch it together. So, other one that I got is, and it's too bad that uh, my Doctor Who fans aren't here today, because uh, McFoy is perfect to Santa Claus. Uh, Colin Baker here is uh, second season or. Series 23, as it's called. Uh, 
over in the UK for my UK brethren that watch Dr. Who. Very excited about this. The next one to come out is the Sylvester McCoy one. Uh, that comes out, I think, on January 27th of uh, next year. And here's a mess, by the way, guys, but I just got off work. He actually let me out early because... Is it I don't remember the heating Christmas, but i got to say that. Love this one. Did you have the set, Warlock? Uh, I want to watch... I really love Trials and Tribulations. It's probably yeah, one of my uh, one of my favorite like special features on any of the Doctor Who sets. Uh, so... This actually, I'm going to be binge watching some, uh, some Colin Baker, the Doctor Who during Christmas, and maybe some John Pertwee as well, and some uh, some horror stuff. Merry Christmas, John. Yeah, season twenty three already. Season fourteen. I did not know that. Oh no, I really, I, I was actually looking for information on that. So thank you. So, this is from my mom. So this is the actual present that I'm opening, here, live on camera. My last present I opened was uh, was from Brent and was Robocop. Hey, Kathy. Happy holidays. You ready to see this? It's a Scream Factory one. And it's a set. Anybody want to make a guess on what it is? Because everybody's going to guess it's the latest thing. You like Paul McGann. It's not the fly. That's, that'll probably be one I'll get in the new year. But it's one that I've been wanting for a while. And that has probably some of the most extensive features on any set that came from Screen Factory. And that is the Wreck Collection. So, I am so in for that. I got the old one already. Now, if you don't have this uh, and you're a fan of the Wreck films, I am a fan of the Wreck films. Uh, know that uh, some of the making ofs on this set are documentaries are longer than the actual films themselves. Uh, they really dove in depth with uh, with this series. Uh, well, the first Rick film is a cl you know it's kind of the classic. You don't know exactly where where it's going with it. But uh, I got to say, I have been a fan. I don't think that there's one of the rec films that I felt let down with. Uh, now, that's not so much the same <laughs> with, their, with their North American counterparts. Uh, the first one was Quarantine, which was pretty, pretty good. Terminal, I don't remember very much, so I really can't tell. But I've uh, been wanting this for a very long time. Uh, and I'll actually dive into it. In a little bit. It's got all four here. We got Wreck, Wreck 2, Wreck Genesis. If Genesis is the one at the wedding, I think Genesis is the one at the wedding. Uh, you're right. I don't think I've seen Apocalypse either. But whichever one's at the wedding, that one kicked ass. I really like that one. For my dad, I have no idea what I got. Uh, my better half just told me that I couldn't look in the box. There was going to be something that... Uh, That I, uh, that's, that's kind of book-wise, and that I was really gonna like. So, let's check it out. Oh shoot! Uh, hell yeah! So because my dad doesn't know what what movies to get me, what he's been doing uh, yearly now for the last three years is getting me like movie-related books. Oh yes, uh, for my uh, for my collection. And he chose well again, I gotta say. So this is John Landis's Monsters in the Movies. Uh, wow, if Dad, you're watching this, thanks a lot. Uh, Mom, Dad, you guys did amazing. Um, from the Wreck Collection to the Watch That Made Me Cry to this huge coffee table book. Uh, I gotta be careful opening this because, you know, I'm not quite sure. Let's show you some of the... Uh, this is... I know that there's pictures in this book here that uh, are probably weren't available, like uh, in other books, and uh, we're taken from private collections. So, should be a really, really fun. Oh, well, I know it's gonna be really fun. Yeah, and actually, I noticed that. I, I did want to do a video on that actually. 
Maybe I'll mention that during my holiday horrors video. I was asked today at my workplace what the first horror movie that I ever saw was. Uh, what kind of got me started? Well, the first thing that I ever saw when I was probably around three-ish, and it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was at a drive-in. It's a long story. Uh, but the ones that, that affected me first, the ones that I remember seeing, aside from the exploitation stuff, like uh, Clown Murders that would show on CBC every year, and the uh, BBC uh, edition of Dracula uh, that I actually have now, but have the uh, kind of like the negative like view for Dracula, like kind of like when I said negative view, the screen kind of went negative. Oh yeah, one hour photo with, it was the first one serious one for uh, Rob Williams there. Like, serious is in that way. Rob, World of Corning Garp is probably for a serious, serious movie. And my favorite of his, by the way. Uh, so uh, every year they would show the Universal Horror Films and some of the Hammer Films uh, during the month of October on CBC, and uh, during CBC Late Night. So this is a huge one. This is what you call a coffee table book. Uh, So, wow, overall, I gotta say, between the vinegar syndrome uh, stuff, the, uh, the stuff from my, my stocking, the, the Robocop that was, uh, movie that, that, that was sent to me, and, uh, and this here, uh, it's a pretty amazingly awesome Christmas. I am uh, super, super stoked. I may be on my own. For Christmas but at least have my family like you know if they're not here like physically here uh, there's people that I can reach out to and I can talk to Merry Christmas Weldon and that's important it's important to have that and it's important to know that if you don't think if you feel like alone around this time of year or you feel like that you don't have that that always feel free to reach out I'm I'm here there are people around here that are that are here so uh, if you're here on the air right now and you're and you're watching this and you're feeling that uh, that think that you might be like things might be a bit crappier or you may be on your own for uh, for this year, it uh, it will be better and it will get and uh, it will it will get better. Hey Javid, uh, Merry Christmas, Ol Oli. I hope I get Oli, Oli right. I hope I pronounce that right because I, when I see Oli, I think of Oli Anderson. I haven't seen that one actually. I don't have the Seinfeld coffee table books, box set. I don't have any Seinfeld. Yes, I do. I got like, a couple seasons of Seinfeld. Uh, and uh, top 10 Christmas horror films. Actually, I'm doing a Christmas horror video tonight. But if uh, you want me to rhyme, rhyme some off the top of my head, uh, Merry Christmas uh, and Happy New Year, too. Because uh, on New Year's, I'm going to be on a plane. Well, the day after New Year's. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> like the plane goes. Uh, some of my favorite Christmas movies, I'll, and I will tell you right now, is uh, Black Christmas 1974. Uh, Krampus is a good one. Uh, Silent Night, Bloody Night. The Silent Night, Deadly Night, 1 to 5. I like all five of them. There's not one that I don't like. Gremlins, thank you, Warlock. Gremlins is an amazing Christmas horror movie. Die Hard, not a horror movie, but it's a great Christmas movie. Uh, Let me think. Christmas Evil, hands down. Love Christmas Evil. Uh, Don't Open Till Christmas, another fantastic Christmas film. Christmas is one of the movie, one of the holidays that has like benefited from uh, Better Watch Out. I really like Rare Exports was kind of was fun too. Uh, I haven't watched it in a while, so like, like it's been a it's been a bit. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's actually a Christmas movie. Ah, I love Edward Scissorhands. Uh, and, but, uh, oh. what was the other one? Uh, Santa Slay. Okay, I get a kick out of that one with Bill Goldberg, you know. And that one is more kind of like a kitty type horror movie, I would consider it. Yeah, it's been a long time, but The Snowman, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, yeah, that, that rings memories. You know what? really hits me and it, and it's not super christmas but it is a very canadian and if you're i'm sure a warlock will, will know this uh i gotta get that 4k uh, and there is <laughs> we'll get into that tonight actually if you're around 
If not, the, you better watch it. Uh, maybe I'll start it now. Uh, there's a short film. Actually, yeah, there is one that Rebecca McKendry did. Uh, it might be called All Through the Night or Not a Creature. Story. I can't remember right now, but Rebecca McKendry from Shockwaves did it. Uh, she used to be one of the uh, one of the writers or editors on Fangoria magazine back in the old school Fangoria, and she writes for Fangoria now as well. Actually, Stephanie Crawford, uh, by the way, who you've seen, like you heard on here, she's done some stuff on here, and she works with uh, Screamcast, and she does stuff with uh, with Pure Cinema. She actually did a uh, an article for Bloody Disgusting, which I recommend you all check out. Okay, what I was going to say before uh, <laughs> is that uh, and. Warlock's probably going to remember this, because you're Canadian like me, right? I know you are. You're in Ontario. Uh, There was this thing called The Sweater, and it is by Rock... Oh, God, what's his name again? A French writer uh, from Montreal. And it's not so much that uh, that it's Christmas, but it's very Canadian. So it's this short, like animated thing by the Canadian Film Canadian Film Board, which is like a, kind of, they do like local stuff. And the whole idea behind the story is that he's in, uh, he's in Montreal, and everybody there has a Montreal Canadians, that's a, that's a hockey team for people that, that don't watch hockey, uh, sweater. And not just any sweater, they all have the, the name of a famous uh, hockey player in the time by the name of Maurice Rocket Richard. And uh, my, my grandfather, uh, raised me knowing about like hockey players like Rock Richard and people like that. So basically, they'd all go out on the on the field, and everybody would would wear the Rock Richard like hockey hockey jerseys. And one day he wakes up and he tries to put on the hockey jersey, and it's all kind of I love the like <laughs> I listen to that all so often. Uh, the uh, he goes to put on and it's ripped. He can't wear it. So his mother call like writes out to uh, to Eaton's, which is uh, was the store. And rather than just do a regular, like, order, where you fill in the order thing, she thought that was too impersonal. Uh, so she writes to her, Dear Mr. Eaton, can you please send my, my son a new sweater as he has outgrown this one and it has become raggedy. So he waits and waits, because everybody plays hockey here in Canada, until uh, finally, finally the day arrives and the sweater comes. He opens up excitedly his package from Eaton's, and it is a Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. And to put that into context, for like fans or hockey or not fans, people that aren't fans of hockey, Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadian fans are usually are enemies. <laughs> they're, they're the two big teams that, that everybody idolized at the at the time. Um, so he was a kid in Montreal that had to suddenly go wearing a Toronto Maple Leaf sweater at where when a guy everybody hated him he no he w- wasn't allowed to to play on the ice until yeah, a little while yeah he basically got fed up and he threw a stick down and he got he gets like uh because he, he goes to one of those schools like you know a Catholic school uh where basically he's told you know get out of here don't think you're better than us with that Toronto Maple Leaf sweater so he goes at the end of the story to the uh, to the church there, and he and he and he prays that uh, moths come in the middle of the night to eat his Toronto Maple Leaf sweater so that he can have a uh, one. I recommend checking it out if you got children. I uh, I definitely recommend you check it out. It's really fun. Uh, Warlock mentioned one called the Log Driver's Waltz, uh, and that is a, a famous one here. Uh, and I can. Uh, Work the logs a little bit, actually. Uh, I don't, but uh, the only John book I got, w- Weldon, is the one, the John Landis Monsters in the Movies, <laughs> which has me excited. The Rec Collection, the Monsters in the Movie, the Pocket Watch. I'm happy. <laughs> uh, oh, I love Satan Slay, uh, Santa Slay. Uh, the, uh, it's a fun little film. Now, for me, Krampus, like people talk about the movie Krampus, which is you know good, or the one of the other Krampus films, the, the, like the that were made. Uh, but Krampus hits a different spot for me. When I was uh, when I was growing up, uh, one of the magazines that that I would read a lot was uh, was one called Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone had a actually a fictional 
a fiction mag a magazine with like fictional stories in it. And uh, I was a big reader of things like Twilight Zone, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, like uh, Strange Fantasy, you know, all, all those type of magazines. But there was a particular, sto particular story, and I can't remember who the writer is. Hey, Merry Christmas, uh, Andy Phantom. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're already in Christmas, aren't you? But it was a bit Krampus, and it was the first time that I'd heard the Krampus story. This was, you know, this is pre-internet and stuff like that. So it was the first time I'd heard anything about Krampus was dur during this uh, Twilight Zone story that was in uh, Twilight Zone magazine. And if anybody else ever read it or, uh, or knows Twilight Zone magazine, definitely shout it out, like let me know. Uh, but it always stuck with me. Yeah, it was one of the creepier stories because uh, Twilight Zone magazine was really dark. I want to see if I can find the author for it. Because I have a feeling it's a famous author. Oh my god. I am just going to scream. My leg is killing me right now, by the way. I had to come home on my lunch break to... It's not called Krampus. What's it called? Is it Knuckles? Which is very Krampus like. Maybe it was Knuckles. Uh, if you ever heard the story of Knuckles. So basically, I I confused it all these years with Krampus. Uh, I looked it up. Good for you. Good on good on Google, right? Finding it right away. So Knuckles was written by uh, by Kurt Clark, who was well a pseudonym for Donald Westlake. And if you're uh, if you're a fan of like short stories, you've come across the name Donald Westlake several several times. Uh, They did. I got. I'd like to find some of those warlock, but this is basically the story. Knuckles. And you ready? It's it's only a short one. Don't worry. Uh, basically, it's about and uh, tells the tale of an abusive father who can no longer beat his wife. Instead, begins to terrify his children with tales of a shadowy counterpart to Santa Claus. He dubs Knuckles a cruel way to keep his kids on their very best behavior. As the antithesis of Jolly Saint Nick, the, the titular Knuckles is a looming skeletal specter. Robed in black, and while Santa delivers presents with his flying reindeers on Christmas Eve, Knuckles travels underground in a carriage driven by blind white goats to steal away misbehaving children. The father so pleased himself for thinking of his disciplinary tactic that he spreads the word to other parents in the neighborhood, only discovered too late in a twist of poetic justice that the faith of children can be a powerful thing. And uh, Knuckles, Knuckles could be coming for him. So be careful the stories you tell your kids to scare them because the imagination is a wonderfully incredible thing, but it is something that is powerful, especially here. In the Twilight Zone. Sorry, guys, I, I kind of had to do that. I can't believe I found it. Apparently. Oh, Santa Claus is Do you watch Santa Claus? Uh, like the one that was, uh, what was it, Spain or was it like, was it Mexican? Or like with the, uh, with, what's his name? Where Santa Claus is up on this big, like, kind of like planet thing, and he's got this huge, <laughs> huge, uh, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Looking thing, uh, with an eye. It's really freaky. It's, it's really weird. And there's like the devil is going down, and he's trying to like corrupt this, uh, these kids. So Santa Claus has like elves, which are children from all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> which he uses to to make his toys slave labor 
Andy, uh, you you, you kind of grew uh, in my in my in my mind there because my I was that was my plan with my uh, with my kid. Uh, uh, he was coming, and uh, we were going to watch uh, Polar Express. Actually, that was his one request: that we watch Polar Express together. It's one of his favorite. Gallagher, you know your stuff, man. <laughs> I have that here actually. I've got like I've got it here under its original one, and I've got it here under Mystery Science Theater as well. So I have uh, both, but the Santa version. And I was the, I've got Santa Claus Conquers the Martians here on Mystery Science Theater under the Essentials Collection too. So I might check out one of those um, a little bit later. I'm not feeling Christmassy, as in like I don't, I don't have a lot of the. I was I was pretty much the Grinch at work today. I was I was not feeling the. Uh, the best but what my workplace did do for me and I have to really say it means it means like it meant a lot to me is that my better half is like six hours difference in, in time from where I'm, I am and she's at so in order to make sure that uh, I could I can talk to her and that I wasn't gonna miss out on see, on seeing her over FaceTime on Christmas Eve they actually sent me home early uh, they got gave me a voluntary leave and said you know go home it's christmas eve and you'll be able to talk to your better half so i really truly appreciate that i work with some great people even when i am hard to get along with i haven't seen the kid russell santa phone adam you gotta love the santa claus works in the martians it's supposed to be horrible <laughs> it was it was extremely nice though and I was in my grumpy, grinchy mood. Uh, so it was very extremely nice. And I, I strongly appreciated that. Um, <laughs> but tonight, tonight I watched some Doctor Who. Tonight I, uh, I'm going to dive into the Red Collection. You want to see the Red Collection? You guys want me to open that up? You want to see what we got feature wise? So what they did for the Red Collection, and when I saw the, I knew Mom was getting me the Red Collection, um, but when I saw like the case, I said, is this the, the Red Collection? Because it looks kind of, it looks smaller, and it's four films. So it's, uh, it actually has got like these thinner cases, and I, I, I really kind of dig that. Uh, so let's open it up. Let's check it out. I got to say, I've gotten a lot more Screen Factory stuff this year. Unfortunately, there's no Doctor Who Christmas special since Chibnall came about. He he's kind of said there's nothing else to do with the Christmas specials, and he started doing New Year stuff. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. I do miss the Christmas special, even though a lot of them were weren't the best. But uh, when they were good, they were really good. When they were bad, they were Doctor Who in the wardrobe type of thing. So as you can see, you can see it better. And it is, even though it is more of a harder case so let's let's check it out i'm not sure if you have like a doubt they'll have alternate artwork for this so this is rec i have them all here in a special set actually i know <laughs> us too but we don't get the booklets, but at least we get, you know, get all the stuff aside from that. I think there's like a couple features on the couple of the early ones that we didn't have that, that you guys had. Eventually I'll get like the, uh, I'll get a couple of them. Like when I go over to to, uh, to Morocco, I'll probably be getting them from England then. Because uh, I'll be buying a lot of my movies from there. That's why I'm getting the stuff that I want on Screen Factory now. Because next year sometime I may be headed to Morocco to live. Uh, yeah, we don't get slips anymore either. Uh only in the first, uh, only on the, I didn't even get on the first one. I got on the, on the two bigger ones. We celebrate, well, on the we, 24th is Christmas Eve for us only, but Christmas Day is, uh, <clears throat> is the 25th. In, in Newfoundland, we have a day before that called Tibbs Eve, <clears throat> where we, uh, we drink and uh, celebrate. Uh, some people actually uh, call it Tipsy Eve as well. But uh, the original name of it is uh, is Tibbs Eve. This is the second Rec Two, 
Some people, I feel like the second one better than the first one. So, by the way, features on these. Uh, first one, outer commentary uh, with the writer-director. Making a wreck, that's a, a long one. Uh, Boxing Day, yeah. Boxing Day in, North, in most of Canada is the 26th. Boxing Day in Atlantic Canada is the 27th because they take up to 26th for, for religious reasons. Uh, making Wreck, that's huge. Uh, teaser and theatrical trailer, TV spots, interviews, behind the scenes footage. Uh, again, with part two, we get deleted scenes, behind the scenes featurettes, a walkthrough of Wreck, Wreck 2 on tour, a stage to film festival press conference theatrical trailer. And you may think that's not a lot. Actually, it is a lot when you look into how long some of those things are. Then we get to my favorite cover so far, Rec 3 Genesis. I got, I dig this. I really do. Some people didn't like it. I, I really liked it. Well, the basic thing behind Rec, Alan, was the first one was a, uh, was kind of a, uh, was a found footage film. And I don't want to tell you because I want you to watch it and kind of figure, see yourself. Uh, it's a it's a really fun film, and it's uh, it can get intense intense in some portions of it. Oh, I've not seen Apocalypse. Uh, this looks awesome. Uh, I love this cover. Making a wreck for Apocalypse, right? So this is the cover to wreck Apocalypse. I don't want to say like just like a zombie type film because I think that that will be underplaying it. Uh, but I find that they built a really good world in the Wreck universe. And uh, I like the, in the different twists and turns that they've gone with the, with the series of films. And I definitely recommend it. Uh, in North America, they uh, remade the first Wreck film on called Quarantine. So if you've seen the movie Quarantine, uh, that's, that's Wreck. Uh, that's the original Wreck. <laughs> that's one way to say it. It's a news woman on a ride along with... Firefighter medics. That is that that is legit true, and then something happens, and that is wreck. Uh, I'm from Newfoundland. We are known, I, although I'm not like a huge drinker. I never have been. That's just me. Uh, there is like you know, obviously there's a stereotype of the uh, of the hard drinking Newfoundlander. We're supposed to be hard drinkers and hard workers and uh, spend a lot of time with the ladies. That's the, that's the, uh, what you call it, uh, that's the blanket uh, that, uh, that's used across Canada. That's, <laughs> that's what they say. Uh, and we, actually here in Newfoundland, uh, would, would do a thing called the Goofy Noofy. Uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's actually a, a phrase. Um, where uh, we kind of make fun of ourselves. Like, we're very, we have a very deprecating type of humor. There was a series of books that came out, those written by a Newfoundland uh, author called Newfie Joke Books. And nowadays, there are some people in Newfoundland that take great offense to them. Um, not taking into the fact that it's written by a Newfoundlander. That is true. <laughs> You definitely have a speed there, but you have to understand, David, that it's the Scottish, Irish, you know, the United Kingdom roots that came into Newfoundland that uh, that caused that, that that I think started all this. So it all comes back from there. One thing I can say uh, is that uh, people that came here from Ireland or Scotland or England, uh, well, not here, well, in Newfoundland. Uh, I went, they'd usually go in communities and like they'd go into smaller communities and uh, some of them would stay there and a lot of those communities were more isolated and like uh, they grew over the years. But if you go and you talk to a lot of the older people in those communities, then you're going to actually hear a uh, more pure dialect like Scottish or Irish or uh, English dialect, an uh, older one, than you would actually hear in their, in their own regions. Because it hasn't been tampered with over years, it's uh, it's stayed. So a lot of these like so going to different areas of Newfoundland, you hear very different dialects, very different like types of slang. Like it's for me, 
I'm from Newfoundland and it's hard for me to understand certain people in certain dialects. Uh, it always has been, actually. I had a roommate with my uh, second year of college, actually, and I did not. Like, great guy, huge Iron Maiden fan. Uh, I appreciate that. I was, I was a big Iron Maiden fan, too, but he was, like, the biggest Iron Maiden fan I ever met. And, but he was, like, he had a dialect, and I swear to God, I couldn't understand anything. Exactly. That's the thing. Less moving around means less corruption of the accent. Uh, people have come from, like, different areas, like, uh, like historians and, uh, I guess, what's the word you're going to use, linguists, to, to study it, like, to go to the, some of the more remote, more rural, remote areas to actually, actually study the dialect and see how it, a lot of it has stayed unchanged, which I think is actually fascinating. And uh, it's something about my little place in the world that I'm actually uh, I'm very proud of it. I ever heard a Brummy accent? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, it almost seems like you got to say that with an accent, doesn't it? I've heard an EastEnders accent uh, because uh, because I used to watch that. That's the. Th it's fa I find it fascinating. It's something that I that I that fascinates me. Birmingham. Oh, I love the UK accent. I'm, I, I'm a killer. I, like. My better half has like, uh, she's from Morocco, and uh, but she doesn't. I should have known they had a mobile game, uh, but she. I, I always said her Newfoundland accent was better than mine. <laughs> I'm not joking. She actually picks up on that stuff really, really easily. Um, what well, David Tamley's talking in his regular in his regular accent, Peter Capaldi always. Rich from the UK. I was. Is there any movies or series that take place in Newfoundland? Only there is a great series uh, that's very much like the Rockford. If you know what the Rockford Falls is, it was an American show that came out in the uh, in the seventies uh, with James Garner. Well, we had a show uh, that was a pretty much a modern incarnation of the Rockford Falls called Republic of Doyle. It's a uh, a Canadian series, but they had like some big actors in it, like some actors from a because a lot of people like to come to Newfoundland. And uh, a lot of big actors. Like, if you're a fan, if you like Jason Momoa, for instance, the guy who plays Aquaman, um, he's in Newfoundland all the time. <laughs> he, like, he loves it there. He, he literally, he, he has a series uh, that's based in there. So, yeah, if you like Jim Rockford, Kathy, a Republic of Doyle, you're going to like it. I mean, you're, you're really going to like it. The lead character's name is Alan Doyle, and he's, uh, he's a private investigator. Uh, uh, located in uh, in St. John's. I hope something's okay. Was he in Grand Prix? James Garney, you mean? Uh, probably. Uh, hold on a second. I got Republic of Doyle here. I'll show you what it looks like. You do mind waiting a second? I gotta hobble in because my my leg is actually hurting me. Yeah, I think he was actually. James Garner was in like uh, support your share your local gunfighter too. Actually, I actually have two copies of season one of this uh, series. There's a few series done in Newfoundland, but this is probably one of the most popular ones, one of the newer ones. Uh, so this is, uh, this is Doyle. And he's played by Alan Hocko, who did like uh, a few different things. And here's the uh, the cast actually on the on the back. You'll actually see them. It's a smaller island with a lot of like. Uh... You oh yeah, Kath, you definitely like this. So first season, you know, commentaries, making of is on here. What language? Well, I'm talking. <laughs> 
English. <laughs> And this runs like uh, this one runs twelve episodes, I think. And Labrador, Newfoundland, and Labrador, yeah. Oh yeah, they speak French here. Uh, like not everybody. Uh, we should know French better, to be honest with you. There's a lot. There's um, where I'm at right now. Nova Scotia probably has a has a bigger French speaking base than uh, than Newfoundland does. Uh, we're taught French from early on. Early on, whether we. Once we re reach high school, it's it's not mandatory anymore. You can choose to take French. You can choose not to take French. Um, I wasn't the best at it, and I chose not to take it, which was a huge mistake. Um, and I uh, and now I've got to get a, a French tutor when I go to Morocco. That that's I'm not even lying. I, I have a French tutor set up uh, so that I will learn to speak French. So if I get any like bilingual viewers on here, maybe I can. Put on some snazzy wordplay. The, well, the complete series. Uh, the UK office is the. I got the complete series with the Christmas special and everything. Same with extras. I got extras too. Extras is my favorite. I, I like extras over the office out of those two shows. Jake Showcase. I don't think I do actually. Uh, I know, uh, or I don't know a lot of them personally, especially. Uh, we have a, a comedic uh, YouTube channel, uh, uh, not for, not me, uh, but uh, <laughs> but like called the Outhouse, and like they they're they're from they're St. John's based. I think it's a white set, but I have to check again. Not more. That's like the outhouse. Have you ever seen the outhouse? If you haven't seen the outhouse, check them out sometime. Uh, it is some of the the humor definitely is Newfoundland centric, but I think you'll it, you know I think it plays. Moods well, Moods is Ontario, right? Uh, you're talking about Moods six one six, right? Who does the John A. McDonald, the first Canadian premier? Now there's a drinker for you. <laughs> David, there's there's a drinker, Sir John A. Macdonald. Uh, our first Prime Minister of Canada was known for being a raging alcoholic, actually. Uh, so you got to remember one thing when it comes to like um, what, uh, really. I always thought was uh, for some reason I thought he, like. <laughs> I do too. I'm a huge fan. Uh, not everybody likes Trudeau, but I'm a big. I'm a, I'm a big. Fan. I like the original Trudeau <laughs> too. Uh, he was the the original Trudeau was not liked by everybody, but he's probably the kind of like now. He gives us an imprint, a global imprint, and, and it's really hard to do. Uh, we're 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 a laid back country. Um, we're pretty chill, and at a time when you know, globalization is really important. I'm not going to get political because I, I really don't want to do that. It's important that your country has, uh, has it like, like is globally seen. And that's not, uh, and seen in the right way. But let's not talk politics. That's not what I'm here about. I do that on my other channel, on my, well, my sort of, I do it on my Twitter. I'll leave that out of here. <clears throat> Until I run for politics, then then you can vote me for prime minister. Cause why not? Shag it, right? I almost got into politics actually, which I think would have been hilarious. Cause you can, yeah, you can do the job, Jeff. <laughs> Well, well, I'll be in Morocco now, so and I don't think I'm allowed. I won't be. Able to, I won't in Morocco. I won't you know? I'll be there, and I'll be like, uh, and I'll have my whatever papers you got. But you can't get citizenship in Morocco. So, um, Morocco, Morocco actually doesn't have an extradition treaty. 
Um, so uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with citizenship, but just that's a neat fact to put out there. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. Be, oh yeah, well, of course. There's, there's a couple of Canadian shows I'm not exactly proud of, uh, out there. Is Kenny versus Spinny Canadian? Because if it is, I apologize. I don't know for sure. It might be American, uh, but if that's Canadian, I, I, I sincerely apologize. That that's the thing. Uh, I do not have a leg lamp. The Mountie. Mountie. Are you talking about Due South? Uh, Due South was incredible. Uh, actually, there's a new flame connection on Due South as well. Uh, Die South. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, Due South. Uh, it was actually a really good film. Uh, really, good, really good series. Uh, the guy that plays his dad is, uh, was Gordon Pinson. And uh, Gordon Pinson uh, is a, a new flame actor that it's well known and uh, it was a friend of my grandmother's actually. There was like a lot of great shows. Uh, like, I was looking up Canadian shows today actually when I was at work. You're lucky to be in California, dude. I love the visit there. We had planned to. We, we do plan to. Uh, we're just waiting to. Uh, we're waiting for a bit. We'll see. We're gonna get. We'll eventually get there. We want to do like the whole Disney World Universal thing, Six Flags. You know, my better half's a huge like roller coaster fan, and she wants to. She's always wanted to get on roller coaster with me. <laughs> I'm a huge chicken, so I'm I'm getting on it, but uh, I'm not gonna like it. The Beachcombers ran for a long period of time. Started Bruno Drusi originally, uh, who was a uh, a Greek actor uh, here in uh, in Canada. <laughs> that happens a lot, actually. Uh, that's like uh, Bonanza was a big show, like in like the Western show, um, and uh, a lot of people didn't realize that Lauren Green, who was the, you know the head of the of the of the family, was uh, was Canadian. Actually, he was the face of of, of the war. He was, the, he was the voice of the war back. Actually, Danger Bay. Danger Bay was huge. Uh, Danger Bay was so huge, actually, that my better half went into marine biology uh, from, like, one of her, her big things that she saw back in the day was Danger Bay, which was a, a great, like, little kind of half-hour kind of kind of an adventure uh, show for younger people. I actually still like it. Um, King of Kensington is something I grew up with. I was in love with Kathy when I was young. Uh, if you know King of Kensington, you know exactly who that is. Uh, but it was a uh, Kensington, by the way, is uh, is an area in Ontario, and uh, go to like Kensington Market, like it was a a big deal. But it was a melting pot of uh, of cultures and different ethnicities. And uh, King of Kensington started out Waxman, who unfortunately has passed away now, but he's been in many shows, and I'm sure that each of you have seen him somewhere in something, whether it's Death Wish Five. I apologize if it's Death Wish Five, but. Uh, <clears throat> He did a, the idea behind King of Kensington was to uh, have, to show a guy, like a working class guy, and the people around him, whether, like, and to show what a melting pot Canada was. And uh, kind of celebrating our, uh, our diversity. A lot of the early shows did that. Uh, King of Kensington uh, did it, uh, Beachcombers was, was big on that. Uh, it was only like it's only later on that they stopped that so much, but uh, even now it's getting better. A little so be awesome. That was another one. Matt and Jenny. I'm not sure if we're like you remember Matt and Jenny. Uh, it's probably just me and you, but Matt and Jenny with uh, making follows, great show. But my ultimate, ultimate box set, Canadian TV box set that I want more than anything else, hands down, across the board, is. Lou Giacone in Seeing Things. Yep. And if you've never seen Seeing Things, look it up on YouTube. Dreams are for the nightlife, not the wide awake. Visions are for crazy men, not me for goodness sake. But I'm seeing things. 
It was an amazing show. And, uh... Hey, 13 Wolfman, Merry Christmas, dude. I'd end up with some nice stuff this year. And some nice box sets, some nice books. Oh. <laughs> you got your fingers in there more cool I is the video up yet when the video comes out let me know like Facebook me you know I want to see it man <clears throat> I don't think so Warlock As if it did I, I'm totally unaware of it uh, I haven't seen any like release for seeing things seeing things ran for I think six seasons um, but uh, no I don't think it's ever gotten a release Only if they put them out in the unaltered versions, then then I'll then I'll probably get I'll probably get them anyway. I'm a sucker, yeah, but I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I haven't seen the Severn yet. I actually got that put on my watch list. Toonies, yeah, Loonies and Toonies. I missed the dollar bill though. I'm I'm an older guy. I remember the dollar bill. <clears throat> I remember the two dollar bill. I, for a while, I had like one. Like I kept some. Christmas cartoons, so I have a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> but it's really hard to say. Uh, a lot of the stuff is like, like I, I got, I got like the the Flintstone stuff, but it's within the sets, and uh, a lot of them are within like, like you know, TV sets, like uh, series sets. I don't think, and I got like what's called this one. Oh, what's it called? Like this Christmas cartoon set, like the classics, like Frosty and Rudolph and all those. And the Grinch. <clears throat> Huge Grinch fan. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> Chicken lady. Are you, you're, uh, are you referring to, uh, not four on the floor, but uh, Kids in the Hall? I was never a big Chicken Lady fan. I never got into that one. I like the uh, Crush Your Head character. Crush, crush. Oh, it's so bloody. Uh, if you don't... I'm, if you don't know who that is, you're totally baffled right now. Uh, there was a show called Kids in the Hall. A lot of the actors went on to become very famous. But, uh, like, like, Mr. Canoehead, that's four on the floor. It scared the crap out of me. I thought it was like one of my kids or something like that. No, <laughs> That's, I've got to. It's going to be really bad, so I got to watch it. You know I like bad stuff. <clears throat> groovy. I love groovy ghoulies. Do I? Do I? Do I? Do I? Hanna Barbera is my jam. I grew up with Hanna Barbera. I got some of the Rankin Bass ones. Uh, I don't know if I got them right here. Like they're probably in the other room somewhere. <clears throat> but I do have like a set of them that actually came out. But I. Uh... Oh, wait, I got some here. Yeah, so this is one of the sets I got the classic Christmas favorites. Oh, huge Mr. Magoo and Pink Panther fan. I like Mr. Magoo. I better have like Pink Panther more. I don't have any. Do I have any? I don't think I have any Larry suits as a Frankenstein. But this has on it Dr. Uh, Dr. Zeus's Heather Grinch Stole Christmas, Pinocchio's Christmas, Stingiest Man in the World, The Year Without a Santa, Rudolph's Shiny New Year. That's horrible. Nestor the Long, Nestor the Long Your Donkey, Frosty's Winter Wonderland, Twas the Night Before Christmas, Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. I guess I need the Ruta from Frosty actual original ones, don't I? They're a pretty good set. Like, definitely well packaged when I put together. And I love stop motion animation, so it's always a big thing with me. Especially around Christmas time. Because that's what I grew up with, with the stop motion stuff. Even like the woman Fox's Mad TV did like a stop motion animation. Kind of like making fun of like the uh, those. Is it your birthday? I'm not gonna sing happy birthday, but I don't sing. 
I do have Mad Monster Party. That's a, that's that's a that's one that you gotta have. Uh, if you like stop motion animation at all, and you're you're like a a monstery type person, you like the classics, Mad Monster Party is a must. It's a must have in your collection. But as you guys can probably tell, I'm a huge fan of like of animation, and uh, everything from like Droopy to Popeye to the Flintstones to SWAT Cats to Jabberjaw to the new Scooby-Doo movie to Scooby-Doo. I got Scooby-Doo. Like I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan. Oh, speed racer. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm a speed racer fan. How about Erwin Allen? Quinn Martin. Oh, Quinn, Mar uh, Quinn Martin production. Chapter 2. Death from Below. Yeah, I watch a lot of Quinn Martin. <laughs> the thing that I that I watched a lot. You're Batman. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I, th I think became much more influential on my on my life than I ever thought it was going to be was a show called Minder. Does anybody know of a, ever hear of a show called Minder uh, originally with Dennis Waterman? Um, yours cool, exactly. You know Minder. Um, all right, so the character of Terry uh, basically, uh, yeah, gets out of, you know, what was in the box? Oh, you want to see? Actually, I'll show you. What I was saying before, though, was I grew up watching the show Minder, and for portions of my life, not prison, I'm not you, but that that that's pretty much me. Uh, the the you know the Minder type, the guy that takes care of stuff. Uh, so it really became personal, actually, after a while. Looking back on it and realizing, okay, wow, I didn't think my life was going to take that direction, but okay. So, I got this from my mom. You're getting sleepy. And it made me cry because it has a nice message on there. I got... Doctor Who, Colin Baker, he's the doctor, whether you like it or not. From my mom, I also got the Wreck Collection. Super stoked to watch this, especially part four, as I've never seen part four, and the case for part four looks amazing. My better half, <clears throat> I got Ring the Holidays and pa Robo Night Before Christmas. And from my dad, I got the amazing, huge book. John Lance's Monsters in the Movies, which I'm very, very stoked about. It is huge, man. It is so huge. Part of me wants to take this to Morocco with me and put it into the... Uh, I want to take something from my mom, something from my dad. And put it into uh, into my condo. <clears throat> Just to have it there. Kind of as a... So that's what I got. Uh, my other Christmas gifts were my Vinegar Syndrome stuff. And uh, the other stuff that I showed earlier. And by the way, Trick, check it out. It's actually pretty good. Alistair Sim, oh, Christmas Carol. George Cole's a protege of Elster Sam. I can see that. Uh, but yeah, I often felt like Terry from Minder. School for Scoundrels. It sounds like I've seen it. I'll check it out though. Uh, well, what I'm doing, it's, it's two prong actually. Uh, I uh, will be, I'll be teaching English. That's, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing. And I will be running a, uh, a bed and breakfast there, an international bed and breakfast. So though that's uh, so it's going to be busy. And 
aside from that, then, well, I better retire. Uh, so that's going to be my, my work that I do through retirement. Okay. I will definitely let you know when it starts up. It is sad to think that John Lands had no line, especially the stuff that he's done. The only Ford Capri. <laughs> well, the only other white Ford Capri early on. Later on, he, there was other cars as well, uh, because you know Arthur was a used car salesman after all. Uh, no, I was not the person that uh, that that drove the car. I was the person that went and talk to people <laughs> there was issues that was me uh, oh yeah when you're younger uh, yeah but later on there's a few different ones did I watch Nickelodeon's Actually, I did back in the day. I remember that movie. You know, your car is 13 wolf, man. You know you better than me, I'll tell you that much. I don't drive. Um, epilepsy actually prevented that. Uh, every time that I've been going to get, like, okay, I'm going to get my license, there'd be, like, there'd be a seizure issue, and then I'd have to wait a couple more years. And the, I don't know. I I should have the professionals here somewhere too. I think I think I have professionals here somewhere. Um, I'd have to uh, to look. I don't have the Sweeney, which I would really like to have. Merry Christmas, Cool Blue. Or any of the Sweeney movies. Um, the Sweeney was a show that also with uh, that I used to watch. I watched a lot of British TV. Like a lot of British TV. I grew up uh, on British television. Uh, I love British TV more than like North American TV. Usually two years if I have like a, if I have like an, a grand mal seizure. Nowadays they've changed the name to seizure. I worked for a uh, an epilepsy company at one point, um, but uh, I don't. I love Inspector Mars though. Uh, Life Snows with She Devil. I'll, I watch Dennis. It's so weird. What do I think? I like the swing. Well, I don't know if I've seen the second one or not, to be totally honest with you. I know I saw the first one, but it's been a long time. Um, but I like I like the Sweeney. I, I like the show itself. Um, so I kind of dug the film. You know, it was the original cast. I, I kind of dug that. Um, but I haven't seen the second one. But I do want to get the keynote ones. Yes, I do have Are You Being Served, both the original and I got the one, you know, when they did in Australia, like that short-lived Are You Being Served Again, remember that one? Um, I got that as well. Going up. I love Dennis Potter. Uh, Lipstick on my collar, I uh, like better than singing Detective. Lipstick on my collar I grew up with. That's one of the shows that I watch, that would come on my on PBS a lot, so I ended up watching it. Uh, I'm a huge music fan. I don't like talking about music on it very often. But I'm I'm big into uh, in, in into music and uh, musical programming, so uh, Dennis Potter does have a lot of that, like in his uh, in his stuff, in his uh, in his shows, and utilized it well. Are you free, Captain Peacock? I can't say what the girl would say, but there was a character. Uh, Man in the Suitcase. I do remember Man in the Suitcase. Ran on Hopkirk. Which one was Pauline? I gotta look her up. Is she cute? Is she cute? Is that why you're saying Pauline from EastEnders? I'm gonna guess that she's cute. I'm totally looking her up. Oh, Wendy Richards. Oh, wow. She was in Are You Being Served. Um, that's why you mentioned her, I'm guessing. And she was Pauline Fowler. Didn't Wendy Richards uh, pass, right? Like breast cancer? 
She did, didn't she, right? She was gorgeous in East End, and in, in Are You Being Served, she really was. She got to say pussycats. That's why that didn't go through. <laughs> Baron, The Invaders. Oh, the Invaders was Roy, Tyne, was Roy Thines. Uh, it didn't last long enough. Great series. Uh, Adam Amantium lives. Uh, yeah. It ain't half hot, Mom. Is that, I don't know that. Uh, I really don't. I remember Man About the House, uh, Septuan Sun. Uh, I actually remember Sanford Sun, too, which was the North American version of that. Some others do have them. I do, I do remember that one. Uh, my favorite, though, uh, all time, is, uh, is still, uh, although I like Mighty Python, that. It's, it's, it's always going to be, uh, oh, God, it's totally blank on me right now. What the heck? Froze up there for a second. Bottom, uh, porridge, I love porridge. Um, that was, and, of course, the two Ronnies. It's good night for me, and it's good night from him. Uh, we had our uh, Canadian edition of version of that, which was uh, Wayne Schuster. And, yeah, Schuster was related to the guy that created Superman. Oh, I love the Anderson stuff. <laughs> Let's go to the Thunderbird thing. <clears throat> the young ones. I love the young ones. That's Rick Mayhall. Rick Mayhall passed away, too. He was in, like, uh, Drop Dead Fred. And uh, he had a part in the uh, in Shock Treatment as well, actually. Red Dwarf. The one that people don't talk about enough, and that I'm surprised, uh, is uh, Blake Seven. Oh, cool blue! I grew up with with. Uh, I'm I'm from Newfoundland. Uh, we had a channel called CBC Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and they would show like a ton of shows from like Return of the Saint with Ian Ogilvy, uh, Doctor Who, Red Dwarf, uh, Blake Seven, uh, Stepton Son. Some others do have them. Like we had a lot of this stuff. Um, and as I grew up, I, I kind of gravitated a lot more towards uh, that programming. Only Fools and Horses was probably my favorite uh, throughout the years. Uh, lovely doubly. What's uh, really cool is like if you've never seen Only Fools and Horses like when it originally first came on, you get the box sets and it says like, as Del Boy always says, lovely doubly, right? And he doesn't. Like the first three, four series of that show, those words never used. It comes up way later on in the series. <laughs> it's in the later seasons. So... If you're a new person going in and you're like, you're looking at the back of the BBC set and it says, as Del Bay always says, lovely jubbly, and you're watching the show and you're like, it's nowhere. <laughs> it's nowhere in this series. What do you mean he always says that? Well, the NHMV in America, uh, it's, 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 it's a shame. I mean, like, it's actually, it means his master's voice is uh, where the, uh, what HMV, you know, the full uh, thing of it. I love it with Pearl. My little gray cells. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I love uh, Jeremy Brett as Sherlock Holmes. Uh, he's, he's, he's the definitive Sherlock Holmes. Whenever I saw him in anything else, well, like it was like a Magnum P.I. episode or, uh, or My Fair Lady, for instance, it was always, always baffled me afterwards. I'm like, my God, that's, that's Sherlock Holmes. He was so in, like, entrenched as, as my Holmes. Uh, like I like the new guy, I like Benedict Cumberbatch and all that stuff as well. But uh, Jeremy Brett, like my, is my Sherlock. He's the he's the one that I that I grew up with, and it was so so what on open all hours. Yeah, uh, that actually you know the guy of course you know, from only all only fools and horses, and the guy from Porridge. I don't have a lot of music CDs. Uh, that's one place where I have gone a bit digital. I do have some records. I like record over CD. Now, whenever I, I can, I'll, if I see a CD soundtrack, I'll pick that up. I got the soundtrack to Slither here. I got the soundtrack to, I think, Saw or Saw 2. Oh, no. I love Faulty Towers. That's me. <laughs> That'll be me running the, the bed and breakfast. That's, that's going to be me.
Basil? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's going to be me. Uh, open all hours, David Jason, and uh, and if I'm correct, it was the guy from Porridge too, right? Like one of the Ronnies. Am, am I right? Did I, did, I, did I mix that up? I think it was Ronnie Barker. Oh no, oh no, Dave Jason was on. Jason David. David Jason. <laughs> but uh wasn't Ronnie Barker in that too? Maybe I mixed it up with another show. Let me check. No, it's Ronnie Barker too. Yeah, because that was part of uh seven one. Ronnie Barker had this like like short lived, I guess, uh, called Seven One. Well, I guess it wasn't short lived. It was. It ran. It ran its, the gambit of its course. Uh, so Seven One was was an anthology series. Like it was a really what it was was seven pilots. Aaron Falsey, that's rich. Uh, so Open All Hours was one of them uh, with uh, with him and David Jason. Uh, Prisoner and Escort was another one. That one uh, is the one I'm pretty sure became Porridge. My Old Man. Spanners 11, I'm not sure, I don't think that one went. Another Fine Mess was a very much a Lauren Hardy type one. Uh, one Man's Meat and I'll Fly You for a Quid. Um, I don't think the other ones kind of went that far. Uh, but uh, uh, Open All Hours obviously did. And Prisoner, Prisoner and Escort became the pilot episode of a series called Porridge, which if you haven't checked it out, check it out. I'm a huge fan of Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett. My, the two Ronnies, they were amazing. Open All Hours has returned. I did not know that. Uh, <laughs> I will check it out though, because because I was a big fan of that. It's going to be different to see David Jason. He's so much older now. Uh, I want to see McGree to come come back with. Uh... I don't. I haven't seen that actually. I'm going to look that up. I want to see McGree come back with uh, Ron Atkinson. I really like the McGree films. McGree films that he did. I'm a big. Fan of McGree. My better half's even bigger fan because she grew up, uh, obviously. She's from Morocco, so a lot of her stuff came from France, and McGree is huge in, uh, in France. Uh, that's where a lot, of, a lot of the stuff came from originally, uh, Inspector McGree. If you haven't checked the Rowan Atkinson Inspector McGree out, check it out. It's, it's really, really good. Uh, extremely well done. Now, there are some, uh, some of the old, older films that were put out. Uh, I like Kino put them out recently. Not the 9 o'clock news. I remember that. I remember spitting image for crying out loud, guys. So it was a show in the 80s with puppets. Jean Gabin. Jean Gabin is one of my better half's favorite favorite actors. Uh, like, she introduced me to Jean Gabin. I, I, that I will be completely honest with. Uh, like, I did not know his stuff as well. Uh, that's like Lino Ventura. I did not know Lino Ventura that well, but my better half really introduced me, and I really kind of fell in love with his work. Fry, a, a bit of Fry and Laurie. I love Fry and Laurie. Michael Gambon. I, I think we, I got a Michael Gambon McGree here, actually. I think my my dad gave it to my better half one year. I watch more British stuff than I watch North American stuff. Is that sad? Um, I'm going to say your stuff just is more fun. If you like mystery stuff and you haven't checked it out yet, Agatha Raisin. Check it out. It's really freaking good. Uh, it's the girl from Extras, actually. Wow, it's been going on for six series, and I did, and I didn't know it. No, I had no idea. Enjoy your ham. You want to know what I'm having for Christmas? For Christmas dinner? I'm mean, having a Christmas Eve dinner. I don't know. I actually, I haven't heard anything on new new Captain Scarlet film uh, recently, but hopefully, uh, it'll be good. I'm having a hungry man. Don't laugh at me. I'm serious. Uh, since my uh, my young one is not coming in anymore, and I don't feel the need to like put up the Christmas tree or to, or to cook, uh, I got a uh, a hungry man turkey dinner for uh, for Christmas Eve. That's my Christmas dinner. So uh, yeah. <laughs> tis the tis the truth. I thought about like. Ordering a pizza. So that's a, 
Do you cook Murdersville? I'm not a cook. Uh, I'm not a really great cook. I've, I can make certain things, like... Like, I can definitely do certain things. I appreciate that, Kathy, but it's a bit of a flight. <clears throat> I, uh... And I had to work, that's the thing, right? Like, I could have been, went with my better half when, when she went, but I uh, just gotten into this, uh, this new position, and I knew they were going to need me around this time of year. And I wanted to, uh, I appreciated the fact that, uh, that I got it. So uh, I wanted to be there for them when they needed me. Hunger Man Heroes, I'm not sure what Hunger Man Heroes are. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I'm glad to keep some people entertained. <laughs> turkey. I don't think I'd go for turkey gravy pizza. That's that's not my type of thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I I got a feeling that my better half got me the Godzilla set. And I'm getting more excited, if that's the case, over the days. Because I've been looking into the films that are on the set. And I'm so in for some Jet Jaguar. She always pulls like a surprise gift. Uh, something that I don't know. And I thought it was going to be a Power Rangers thing. Which I was kind of excited about. But I think she's gone big with it. Which up? Uh, oh, the Flora Fox set. Amazing, man. Uh, that's such a great set. Uh, great features. Great films. Uh, Crimson Capone is really good. <laughs> That's my guess anyway. It could be something else. So I could be totally wrong, guys. Uh, but that's my guess right now. I'll keep guessing differently. Uh, see, this Doctor Who said that was on the, on the list, right? Uh, but uh, obviously she told me to go out and buy that one So for myself for Christmas. Uh, so that's not it. And I mentioned Power Rangers. And she said, that wasn't, you know, she said, that wasn't it. I'm a little bit nervous. And I mentioned uh, Ultraman. And I don't think that was it. So... I'm, I'm wheedling it down, actually. House of Bamboo. Isn't that Vincent Price? Didn't Keno put that out, or am I thinking of something else? Do I, don't, I don't have the movie Doom Mars, actually. Oh, House of Bamboo. Oh, the, the Fuller set. Okay. I uh, Actually, the whole Fuller set's really good. I did, now, he didn't direct all of them. Uh, like, no, that going in. But he wrote. Uh, the films and you'll see if you watch them in order you're going to see like a progression and not just his writing like eventually you'll see him direct films as well it is a great way to see the uh, progression of him as an artist to the point where he felt the need to take over his films completely and much like John Cassavetes would do would like you know would rather make more independent fringe work than he would like give it to like a studio to uh, do and wanted to uh, to make his own there's some great features on there as well. So uh, if you... You got the indicator set, right? It's amazing. I love that at season. And Matt Smith takes over. My favorite line is still the, when he's tying his bow tie. And he's like, you know... He said, so you're a little thing. You're... I think can scan and see the history of uh, of people and you know what they do. <clears throat> Said so scan scan me. Now you what I you know what happens to people that come to this planet and uh, and and try to and try to bother these people. Now run. Science fiction Christmas movies. Well does. Santa Claus versus the Martians count? Uh, I don't know a lot of science fiction Christmas movies. Uh, mostly cheesy ones. 
So that I have. I can't think of any like off the, off the top of my head. I got more horror Christmas movies. I'm a big horror Christmas fan. Like I, I usually watch like Black Christmas on uh, on Christmas Day. I used to watch it on Christmas Eve when my kids were around. That became Christmas Day when uh, when my kids got older and they weren't around. Um, has anybody heard of In Search of Darkness? In Search of Darkness is a, a 1980s uh, documentary on, on well, 1980s, a, a, horror, a documentary on 1980s horror. And apparently there's been a bit of controversy about the, uh, the release. Um, did anybody pick it up? So it ran for around like $50 or $60. Uh, and you get the movie uh, and you get like a, uh, a poster as well. So the initial release of it, <laughs> I like or <laughs> Oh, did you get one of the are are you getting a what's the word? Uh a replacement? Did yours come okay? Cuz some people are upset that theirs came as a as a BDR and the label on the disc what came off. So they're working with another company to uh, now to redo to repress the uh, the documentary and uh, I think you have to just let them know that you're one of the people that uh, that got it and you got one of the early copies of it and they're gonna like uh, send out new new copies for people so did you have that issue Scalder? have you heard about that? Apparently, the first company that they did it from did it uh, did it on the cheap. They put them on BDR discs with with slapped on labels. Uh, but they're working on like uh, getting it. Uh, they're working with another company now to get it out there and get like quality editions of it done. So you <clears throat> you'll be able to get it, be able to watch it, and they'll probably send out another one to you as well. <clears throat> so you get both. Me too. I just found out, found out about it. Uh, and then they're doing another like documentary right now, like on science fiction. So hopefully they get this one straightened away because it's going to scare off some backers. Uh, and I don't want that to be the, the case. Uh, I'm a huge documentary fan. Uh, morning, Dale. Merry Christmas. What are you saying, Alan? I guess you're attracted all the time. <laughs> How do I rate the movies in the Hammer 1 box set? I don't have the fourth one, obviously, because they didn't get it my way. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, what am I getting for Christmas? Uh, well, I got it. Uh, the Angel box set, Spookies, the two VSAs that came out. Uh, a uh, pocket watch. Oh, it's the action one. That's what it is. Pocket watch. Uh, some. Doctor Who. <laughs> Finally, the Wreck Collection. And, oh, Robocop, too, by the way. And Don Landis' Monsters in the Movies. Not too shabby. And, of course, some, uh, some DVDs as well. But, oh, there we go. At approximately. And the one that I'm getting, the surprise one, which I'm still waiting for, which is coming next week, I think. So hopefully I'll get to show you that one before I leave. Whether it does turn out to be Power Rangers, whether it does turn out to be Godzilla, or the Fly Collection, I'm not sure. Uh, it could be either one of those. Either way, I'll be really happy. Whew. All right. At 85 minutes, 
the uh, length of a decent exploitation film. Just hitting that sweet spot. Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. You enjoy your Christmas Eve with your family and your friends and your loved ones. And if they're not there right now, uh, I'm not celebrating Christmas. I am celebrating in a way. They're not here, Ragman. Uh, but uh, I'll be contacting them. I'll be talking to them later on. Have a great Christmas, guys. <clears throat> Jer Jeremiah, great, uh, Merry Christmas. I'm Aaron. This is my movie library. You guys... You guys are the cult of cinema, and I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas.